Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Chalula here. And guess what? It's just two weeks in a row that I get to do one of my Wolverine Wednesdays. I'm really proud of myself. Even though I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm still kind of sick. I'm still a little bit under the weather. I just, man, I don't like doing this, so I'm going to keep doing it. Um, so I'm here to bring you episode 10. That's right, episode 10 of my title series, Wolverine Wednesdays. And I'm happy to be able to bring you the exciting conclusion of the long-awaited story arc, Acts of Vengeance. You know, as always, I got some great coverage for you guys. So let me show them off before we get to the storylines. This is issue number 22. Another great John Byrne issue. Um, you know, as you can see, the, the villain that was introduced in the last storyline, the Spore, is trying to overtake and completely consume our hero. And I like all the yellow on this cover because it reminds me of his old costume, the yellow one. Right now he's rocking the, the brown and orange, and the yellow reminds me of his old one. And all of this fighting and fussing and tussling, you know, I love the issues that show the struggle. So that's, this is a great, great piece of cover art for me right here. And here we have issue number 23. Once again, another great John Byrne cover issue. Showing Wolverine it will soon become somewhat of a classic pose for the character. He's got his fist clenched. He's got his claws popped. And he's ready for whatever comes next, you know. So, another great cover. So you guys... Now you guys already know what time it is. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And let's get to some storylines, huh? Issue 22, titled Outburst. Here we have an Axe of Vengeance, tie-in part 6 of 7. Wolverine races against the clock to try and stop the living disease known as the Spore from being released upon the world by the evil genius Geist. Wolverine, with the assistance of some great art by John Byrne, has a very symbolic and prolific flashback remembering the beautiful Mariko Yoshida, who showed him mercy and that he could be loved, even after her father exposed Logan for the animal he was, but yet again, ultimately, leaving Logan for her duty to her family. Pain, physical and mental. And with a similar fell swoop, Wolverine is brought back to reality in this story titled Outburst, written by Archie Goodwin, artist John Byrne, finisher Klaus Jansen, letterer Jim Novak, colorist Glennis Oliver, editor Bob Harris, and editor-in-chief Tom DeFalco. Another great splash page. Pain is what he remembered then, and it's what he feels now, as President Caridad and his right-hand man, Geist, are torturing Wolverine past the point of any normal human being's endurance. But while Geist persists in wanting to continue the torture, Caridad says he has more important things to do. His migrants are back, and he needs the healing touch of Sister Salvation, although she is still furious with General, for he has not yet fulfilled his promise of allowing her to see their son. But just as the General alludes to the dear sister that the boy may be closer than she realizes, a young soldado rises from the muddy training camp to greet her. While Salvation savors every second with her son Palo, Caridad chastises the young man for not being victorious in his training. Next we see Wolverine get thrown into a concrete cell with his hands shackled tightly so as to not have room to use his claws. Through the darkness, an upside down roughhouse checks in with the hero and tells him that he wasn't tortured with electricity, but sadly, he was beaten with a stick, much like his father used to do to him when he was a child. Wolverine tries to use that memory to coax the strong, angry beast out of Roughhouse in order to have him break the chains and set them both free. Roughhouse informs Wolverine that when Sister Salvation cured him of the spore, she also took his rage away, something he doesn't want back. As Wolverine shares the spore's backstory of plague, infection, and death with Roughhouse, Caridad reflects on Wolverine's story of the tainted cocaine. For a brief moment, he plays with the idea of destroying the crop so as to not subject humanity to any such monster. But soon his hubris is too great, and instead he believes he has the secret to controlling the monster, Sister Salvation. While Sister Salvation is busy pleading her case to her son Palo as to why she left him so long ago, General Caridad calls his newly reunited family together, leaving us with a sinister feeling as he asks his son to be brave. Meanwhile, Wolverine continues to prompt the beast out in Rough House to get him mad and angry enough to break them free. As Roughhouse is explaining his fears and bringing that dark and ugly side that Sister Salvation had healed in him back to the surface, the two hear Sister Salvation screams of suffering. This is enough to get Roughhouse going. As the lady, she needs us, Wolverine. Nothing ugly in that, and proceeds to break them free. Wolverine reassures him by saying, Strictly beautiful, bub. There's actually a few more good one-liners on this page that are worth talking about. Roughhouse tells Wolverine that while they have to go and save Sister Salvation, Roughhouse can't bring himself to hurt anyone anymore. That side of him is gone. Wolverine says, fair enough. When it comes to hurting in this place, I won't double anyway. And just as the two get ready to leave, 
Roughhouse finds Wolverine's costume and asks, is this something you'll need? Wolverine replies with, I come to do business. I do it better in a business suit. And I don't know about you guys. I, I just like those little one-liners right there. It makes them sound real gangster with it. <laughs> As Wolverine and Roughhouse make their way towards Sister Salvation, we see Caridad's plan finally coming to light. He wants to affect his own son, Balo, with the drug and hope that his ex-wife's healing factor will be enough to purge the poison yet leave the enhanced effects of the cocaine to make his son the new hero of his precious Tierra Verde. Disgusted at the sight of his parents' constant fighting, Balo volunteers to submit himself to the test willingly. But while Wolverine and Roughhouse find themselves just in time to save Balo from Guy's cocaine tip dart gun, they soon find themselves in a standoff against Caridad, who has a dart gun of his own. But what Caridad doesn't know and didn't feel was that all the darts that ricocheted off of Wolverine's claws hit him square in the chest, and Sister Salvation was in no mood to heal her beast of an ex-husband. And just as Guy's attempts an exit, he runs smack dab into another battle. It seems that the indigenous tribes of Tierra Verde had unified and built an army. While Geist wonders how the tribes could have organized so quickly, we soon come to find out it's because of none other than La Bandera. Viva La Bandera y Viva La Revolución. These are the chants of La Bandera's faithful army of followers. Never in her life has this young mutant's powers worked out so beautifully in her favor. The crowd feeds off her powers of persuasion, gaining strength from her, as she too gains strength from their confidence in her leadership. Meanwhile, back inside as the poison pumps through Caridad's blood, Wolverine suggests getting him to a medic. Caridad immediately rejects that and vows to be the strong man his country deserves. Wolverine directs Roughhouse to get Sister Salvation and Palo to safety as the spore continues to overtake Caridad. The high dosage literally consumes Caridad's entire body and the fully formed spore emerges. As the monster continues to grow in size and strength, the group attempts to get it out in the open so that they can have more fight but the group still loses some lives to the spore in the process, and as the group's numbers fade, their faith fades. And so does La Bandera's strength fade. As the spore closes in on La Bandera, he says how he realizes she is just a sweet, simple girl with fading power, and not an eternal how he originally thought. Just then, Wolverine comes in serving something up for the spore that he claims is red hot. But the spore laughs at the tiny flames that Wolverine's flamethrower shoots, saying, I have felt the searing fire of the great celestials, and before my bulk, it is easily smothered. And that which is smothered can be swiftly consumed. Just as we see Wolverine's body disappearing into the mass that is the spore. Hopefully our hero isn't totally lost in the next issue titled Endings. Issue 23 titled Endings. I guess an aptly named book for the end of this story arc. Wolverine teams up with some unlikely heroes to try to take down the living disease, the spore, and the man who helped him set him loose upon the world, Geist. Boom, off the bat, another great John Byrne splash page opening with the action-packed vision of La Bandera trying to stave off an attack from the spore. In the conclusion to the Acts of Vengeance storyline titled Endings, written by Archie Goodwin, art by John Byrne, letterer Jim Novak, colorist Glennis Oliver, editor Bob Harris, and editor-in-chief Tom DeFalco. And just as the spore is ready to pounce, boastfully proclaiming his inevitable victory, La Bandera senses his hesitation as Wolverine comes tearing through him. The spore soon gets a lesson as to why Wolverine, with his adamantium lace skeleton and mutant healing factor, isn't digested and consumed by the living disease. And while Wolverine knows he can't compete with the heavy hitting intergalactic beings, he won't be taken down as easily as the spore thinks. But then, Wolverine goes to the dark place he goes to when his back's up against the wall, when there is no other hope but to let the animal out, his berserker rage. As he fights, La Bandera and her ragtag group of soldiers notice the spore can be hurt. La Bandera rallies the troops once more, and they fight against the spore. But as the battle rages on, the group continues to lose soldiers to the spore, and even though they are doing damage, he is growing faster, and they can't keep up with him. As their forces regroup, the spore stays behind in order to rest, pick off stragglers, and grow in strength. Just then, Sister Salvation comes in and announces that, since the spore is a disease, she's the only one who can truly defeat him. Wolverine is pissed at Roughhouse for letting her come back, and questions if Roughhouse even cares for her. Roughhouse replies with, We both do, but only one of us has faith in her. Wolverine explains that duty, honor, a good fight, and a worthy death, these are all things that are a part of him. But faith? No, not really. But at this point, he doesn't really have a choice or a chance to think of another way out. The spore is now a giant, and he's attacking. As Wolverine and La Bandera attack, 
Wolverine is able to slice, claw, and hack at the beast, whose cells rejuvenate almost as quickly as Logan can destroy them, but not without feeling pain. The beast falls to the ground, and now the rest is a matter of fate. The spore laughs as Sister Salvation approaches him, but his laughter soon turns into screams of pain as he explains her touch seers like the fire of the celestials that rained upon him back in those prehistoric times when he was first defeated. The spore's body is immediately emulsified by the searing touch of the Sister Salvation, but not without the cost of severely burning her hands. She's left wondering if her gift was used up by defeating the spore. The following morning, La Bandera gets her army ready to continue her revolutionary charge. Sister Salvation continues to watch over her San Palo and attempt to cure him of the lasting effects of the tainted cocaine. Roughhouse pledges his loyalties and skills to continue to watch over and protect the sister and her mission. Wolverine tells Roughhouse, I got into this to save a good sparring partner and a worthwhile enemy. Looks like I've lost both to something even better. As Wolverine says his goodbyes to the sister, they are left wondering what could have been, but what can never be. Wolverine says he can't stay. Maybe someday he'll be a rebuilder, but for now, his skill set is at the opposite end of the spectrum, and there is one le loose end to tie up. Wolverine watches and waits for Guys to return to his stash box, where he is waiting to give the guy exactly what he deserves. Guy seems to be pleasantly surprised that Wolverine didn't cut him to pieces, but is soon mortified to find that Wolverine surgically removed his entire supporting armor, armor that he can't survive without. But as La Vendetta comes in, they decide instead to save Guy's life in order to have Tierra Verde's first political war prisoner. As Wolverine gets ready to leave, he busts into the first congressional meeting of the Free Tierra Verde, only to deliver the message that Geis has been freed from custody in the hospital prison ward. But then, one of the congressmen reveals that it was a deal that he had worked to Tierra Verde's benefit, which pisses Wolverine off. Sure, free in what you fought against. Hope it's a big benefit. As Wolverine leaves La Bandera with some parting words of wisdom, he comes across his old CIA pal, who seems to know some very pertinent and shady information. Turns out Geis was their mole the entire time, feeding them information on Caridad's regime. The CIA was in on freeing Geist and did nothing to help take down Spore. Logan leaves in a fit of rage, pissed that the CIA would sink to freeing a Nazi piece of scum like that. He makes his way back to where it all began, Madripoor. Back in Madripoor, Logan pays a visit to both General Coy and the Prince of Madripoor in order to kidnap them and settle some unfinished business. Turns out the General Koi had bought the tainted cocaine from Geist in order to try and poison his rival, Tiger Tiger, and hopefully get her into enough of an enraged frenzy from the coke to kill the prince before she died from the cocaine, leaving Koi the one ruling faction in Madripoor. The two men are left wondering if Wolverine had infected them with the cocaine while they were unconscious, to which he replies, I could have, but I'm the only one who can actually survive this stuff and its side effects. Like the both of you might survive being trapped down here with me if you run fast enough and far enough. The sewers of Madripoor are overwhelmed with the rank stench of fear. I don't know about you guys, but I was kind of hoping he would just kill them both. Instead, the two finally escape the sewer systems, bodies intact, pride greatly diminished, and working relationship completely dissolved. As we pan back to Australia, Wolverine and the X-Men's new home, Logan reveals he never took the cocaine. He only released the beast inside and he gave the two men a scare that they'll never forget. Back in Washington, D.C., the former Nazi Geist is greeted by a mystery man, in his native tongue, no less. Guten Abend, Herr Geist, says the stranger, which means, good afternoon, Lord Geist, in German. But who could the shadowy figure be? None other than the master of magnetism himself, the leader of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and of course, infamous Jewish Holocaust survival victim, Magneto, Magneto explains how his wife was killed in the concentration camp that Geist ran, and how he was there to make amends for that. Geist replies with, Liebe Gott, meaning dear God in German. And as classy a dude as Magneto is, he finishes the scene with, Now, why don't we talk inside? I enjoy conversing with former Nazis, Herr Geist. There are no limits to where our discussion may lead. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this is an awesome and very fitting ending to the story for that Nazi war criminal guys to be taken out by which he had fought so hard against. I love this, especially since a few issues back, I was criticizing Magneto for aligning himself with the likes of the Red Skull. But it seems like the man knows how to play the long con, and I salute him for that. So again, you guys, thank you so much for sticking with me through another Wolverine Wednesday. I hope you stick with me next week when we start some nice Jim Lee cover art. 
and I look forward to it. In the meantime, you guys keep stacking hella comics.